know, you know what time it is. It's 8 a.m., baby. It's time to crank that volume up to 11. Welcome to Squawk Box Radio, the place where nothing real happens, and I do care what you people think about that. I really do. Today in the news, planes are being forced to land at airports. I mean, come on. Where else are they supposed to land? That's it. I'm making up my own news. Today in the weather. Open up your own damn window. Are you hot or cold? Are you wet or dry? That's the freaking weather, people. Traffic. If you're moving in traffic, traffic is good. If you're not, traffic is bad. In sports. If you're happy, your team probably won. If you're sad, they probably lost. There now. On with the show. But for some reason, Travis is not here yet. He said he would be a little late, remember? Oh yeah, he didn't talk to me. I'm sorry. So, people, how is your day going? He's here. Oh, thank God. I didn't know what to do today. Quickly get him in the studio. Sorry I'm late. I was at the cemetery. Visiting your mom? And my dad. The bombs just keep on dropping here, folks. Well, we haven't gotten to that part of the story yet. Travis? Get yourself ready, because you just dropped a bomb on us, and now we have to hear it. But after these messages. For a great evening out, there's no place like Aunt Lottie's Leftover Cafe. Located on historic Highway 178, right next to the local hazardous waste disposal site, the Leftover Cafe is a truly unique dining experience. There are no printed menus, but our courteous and professional staff will help guide you in your dining choices. The Leftover Cafe features cuisine from some of the finest dining establishments in the area. And it's served piping hot on our trademark Melmac dinner plates. Aunt Lottie's chefs are highly trained, and they're experts in combing the neighborhood to find the finest culinary cuisine for your dining pleasure. Aunt Lottie's Leftover Cafe is not responsible for any medical issues you have from eating our food. And we are back. I'm your host, you know who I am, and of course you know our guest. Welcome home, Travis. What did you just say? Welcome home. (sighs) Travis, are you ready to begin your story about your father's death? Since we had no idea when this happened, or how, was it recent? It wasn't recent. I just got back from a deployment, and Becky and I were in the yard playing with our daughter. All right. Again, another bomb. People, Travis is blowing us up today. It's bomb after bomb so far. I'm sorry we are jumping around so much. It's just the way the story works. It's okay. So you and your hot, sexy wife were outside playing patty cake. Look out, Travis. She's coming towards you. She's going to get you. Not if I get her first. Be careful, honey. She's fine. Oh no, she's got me. Help, help. Medic, medic. I need a medic. I'm going down. Honey, can you get that? I'm being attacked. Hello? Okay. Hold on. It's your grandfather, Travis. He has to talk with you. Can you take her then? He'll be right with you. I got you, you little monster. Hello? I'm good, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Understood. Thank you, sir. What was it? I need to go home. What happened? There was an accident. My dad is dead. The funeral is in three days. I gotta tell my CO. Honey, I'll be right back. Travis. I'm fine, Becky. I'll be back soon. I drove to my CO's house and filled out all the appropriate paperwork. Went back home and told Becky to pack up. We leave in an hour. We boarded the military hop and landed at the closest military base and drove until night to get to the farm. Becky, wake up. 
We're here. What? We are here already? How fast were you going? Fast enough. I think someone's up. The light is on. As I walked up to the house, I sensed that I really didn't belong here. I mean, sure, I grew up here, but this wasn't my home anymore. I got to the door, and without even thinking, I knocked. Doors open. Come on in. Travis, is that you? Is the army feeding you okay? The army's feeding me just fine, Grandma. I brought someone with me. Hi, Grandma. Is that- Yes. Is there some place I can lay her down? Oh, yes. Darling, there's an extra crib upstairs I got ready. Becky went upstairs to put our child to bed, knowing that she would be up in a couple of hours. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, dear. What are you doing awake at this hour? Oh, I couldn't sleep. I didn't want to wake your grandfather, so I came into the kitchen. I saw headlights, so I figured that it had to have been you or Jackson. Jackson's not here yet? No. No, he had something going on at work and said he'd try to make it later. Mm. He tries, dear. He tries. How's Grandpa taking this? Oh, you know him. He's a lot like you. The world still has to turn. But you're probably tired, and you should find that wife of yours and get some sleep. We'll talk more in the morning. Okay. Travis. Yes? It's good to have you back. Night, Grandma. Sweet dreams, dear. I walked upstairs and found Becky asleep in a rocking chair, holding our child close. I picked both of them up and laid them in the bed, found a blanket and I sat in the chair, staring at Becky and our little one. I dozed off and was awakened by a noise downstairs. I got up, noticing that Becky and the child were gone. I threw on some clothes and ran downstairs. About time, sleepyhead. I guess I was more tired than I thought. Good morning, sweetie. There's pancakes and eggs over on the stove if you're hungry. Just need some coffee first. Now that you're up, Becky and I are going to go for a little walk around the farm and see what Grandpa's doing. Okay. Keep an eye on- I got her. I stayed there in the kitchen and drank my coffee. It was so peaceful here. I picked up Kelly and took her outside and we sat on the porch. She sat in my lap and was pointing to the pigs, giving her best pig sounds. I smiled and oinked back at her. She laughed and I was happy. Until I remembered why we were there. I picked her up and walked over to the fence. I told Kelly, I put this up. She touched the post and said, Dad. I never thought about it, but yeah, that post was like my dad. Hard, firm, doing a job. Showing signs of wear and tear, but still standing tall. I couldn't help but see my dad in everything I looked at. I hoped that one day, Kelly could look at me the same way. We stayed there another night, and in the following morning, we all got ready to go to the church. You almost ready? I've been ready for the last hour. Is Kelly ready? She's ready. She's downstairs with my sisters. I'm glad they came, at least. Jackson still has time to show. He isn't coming. People have never been his strength. But it's his own father's funeral. I'm sure that he sent flowers to the church. Probably made a donation, too. That's his way of doing enough. So how do I look? Mrs. Clark, you look beautiful. Let's go and get this over with, shall we? Are your grandparents going to be okay? No parents should ever bury their child, but they will be fine. What's going to happen to Earl and Hunter? Grandma and Grandpa will keep them at the farm and raise them here. They are so young. They'll be fine.
We all got downstairs and piled in our vehicles and drove to the church. We all took our seats. I saw the flowers that Jackson bought. They were nice, but he never showed. Dad was laying in a closed coffin right in front of us. The girls were already starting to cry. The pastor started to talk. God made a farmer. In Genesis 2, 8, and 15, we read that God planted a garden in Eden. In the east, he had put the man that he had formed, and God put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. God made a farmer, and in fact, that very first man that was ever created was a farmer. Archie was one of God's farmers. He was fortunate. He had neighbors who respected him and counted on him, and family that loved him, and knew that he loved them. This was Archie. God made the farmer. God made the first farmer in Adam. And people who are smart enough to know it, know that farmers are the backbone of society. Someone once said, once in a while, you will need a doctor, or a lawyer, or a policeman. But every day, three times a day, you will need a farmer. So God made a farmer. The pastor continued on with his sermon. The audience was silent, just a crying noise here and there. I held Becky's hand and she would squeeze it every now and then. I could tell she was trying to remain strong. Whether it was for me or for our daughter Kelly, I don't know. But she never shed a tear. In Philippians 4, 8-9, God tells us, Fill your minds with things that are good and deserve praise. Things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Put in practice what you've learned and received from me, both my words and from my actions. And the God who gives us peace will be with you. I believe that Archie was of those characteristics during his journey through life. Those characteristics now lead him to a place of light, happiness, and peace. I believe we call that place heaven. The funeral ended, and we went to the cemetery afterwards and watched my dad get lowered next to mom. We went back to the farm afterwards and told our stories. We laughed, some cried, and later that night started driving back to the airport. Becky? Yes, honey? I know the timing might not be right, but I'm re-enlisting. There's a ranger school that I've been accepted to go to. I'll be gone for a while. I don't know how much I'll be able to talk to you during school. Are you leaving me behind? Just because I'm moving ahead with my life doesn't mean I'm letting go of everything that came before. You and Kelly are a part of me. I'm not leaving you behind. In my experience, I've found that you can never have too much information. As long as you come back to me, do what you have to do. I'll always come back. Always. With that, we drove all night and got to the airport and flew back home never realizing that with her, I was always home. She was my home. Travis, my man, your stories are starting to get to me. I think the next story has to be a little brighter. My producer is over there sobbing like a little child. No, I'm not. I saw you. Don't deny it. But anyways, Travis, we will have to pick this up again tomorrow. Are you available? I'm available. Do you not work or something? I'm retired. I haven't found the right second job for me yet. Well, this place is cheap, so I know there is no work here. Coming from the guy that just got a raise. Ignore him, Travis. But folks, this is where we ended off today. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for another part of Travis's life.
I don't have any idea who's next, but I can tell you it's not going to be as good as this. Let's pay the bills, and I will be back tomorrow. Thank you, Travis. <sighs> Many people ask this age-old question. Nope. Not doing that one. Sorry, folks. Nintendo games are massive hits full of lore, great stories, and undiscovered secrets. If you would like to learn more about the history and hidden treasures about these games, then take a look at Pride's channel. Watching Pride, you might not discover anything new, and you might just wonder what you watched. He may actually be working on a video now, but probably not his.